And there was and you compare it us to Arsenal's last season, right, where they were quite ruthless. They were pushed to the end to score. Yep. But why is it different now that they cannot close out games or score, take their chances? Honestly, right, it's because their front three chemistry is not there. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the Football Kaki. I am your host, Eldad, and I am joined by my fellow Kaki bro, Paul. Bro, how are you doing? I'm doing well, bro. How a long day at work. How about you? Uh, I'm okay. I mean, it's weird not having to take leave on a Monday for the past few weeks, but I think I'm getting back to the floor of things. It's kind of weird that it's 2024 already, bro. Oh, so you haven't been working for the past few Mondays? I think like the past... I said, uh, ever since the year started. No, nah, bro. It's because the past two Mondays is Christmas and New Year's. New Year's, New Year's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, yeah, that's like, true. You got, the, you, got the Monday, you got the Monday off, right? So suddenly when you have to go and work on Monday, it's like... Uh, it's really back to the it's back to the normal normal routine normal right? grind it's a, bit yeah. weird. it's a bit weird because usually you look forward to like a four week work, uh, four day work week right the sun is like oh yeah tomorrow's Tuesday not Monday yeah, yeah. but yeah, tomorrow but, is Tuesday <laughs> yeah la, that's why la. Because, but the thing is that you always go back to work on Tuesday la, but bro anyway bro how's your week it's not I too bad bro I, I went to the birds of paradise on Saturday and I in my opinion I think there are better places to spend <laughs> forty five dollars on, huh? It's forty five dollars for entry, yeah. bro. It's forty five dollars for Singaporeans. <laughs> yeah, how much for for, for normal? Like, that one I'm not very sure. On. Okay, honestly, right, I can see where the money is going to. Yeah, the maintenance of the park, right, is not cheap. Huh? The birds are constantly eating. <laughs> oh, every everywhere you walk, right, the birds are eating. If you really think about it, right, like this is more. This has always been more of a tourist attraction rather than for locals. Okay, so yeah, the reason I was supposed to explain the reason why I went to the Birds of Paradise is because we had you know Clue, right? The yeah. the app. It's like a booking uh agent, like a provider for you lah. Yep, yep. So uh in Japan we were supposed to take this roadway. Okay. So we bought the tickets already, but then it closed because of it just closed like the day we were gonna go eh, because of they, they claimed it uh due to bad weather. Okay. So they couldn't refund us cash. Yeah, oh, so God. then They'll say, oh, sorry, this is unforeseen. Uh, just got to deal with it. And it was like, I think 25 per person, I think. And it's not, I mean, like, it's still money we paid for, right? Yeah. Yeah. So after back and forth emailing, then they decided to refund us in club credits. <laughs> and the club credits was enough to claim to claim the per pack. La. No. We still had to top up, like, I think $15, I think. Yeah. So, so okay, it, that's the way we, no, because we wanted to do something that, we wanted to spend. The, we wanted to expand it to zero la, you know. So we we thought of like hydro dash, but we played. We already went there before, so we just, yeah. we decided why not just try something we haven't been before. And just so happened, the Birds of Paradise recently opened, right? Yeah, because they recently shifted from Jurong to Mandai. But yeah, I think maybe we shouldn't have done that la. <laughs> Okay, not not to like be mean or anything like. Maybe I'm just not a bird person. You bro, I've known you for a long time, right? You were never a bird person. Yeah, but the, okay, there there was one cool animal that I saw, is which is the American bald eagle, la. Yeah, they already had that last time, I think. Eagle is different. Like honestly, right? I ask you this question, right? Like I don't want to be mean or anything, right? There, but have you ever gone to the bird park on your own accord, other than that time? Primary right? school. Has it always been primary school? Not, not. As in, definitely not, la. Not, not a Jurong bird park. As in, it's either with a uh, excursion or like a, maybe like a group. So they have free tickets or something. Correct, la. But no, like, like for me, right? I personally have gone to the zoo more, more on my own accord rather than the bird park. Because of work or what? No, no. Just generally, like it's just you just like once in a while you go with your, to like, bring your nephew or something. Like I won't say more thing. It's more like. Like last time when we were kids, right? My dad would rather go night safari or the zoo. Then, like when you're in primary school, it was always going to the zoo. And yeah, it's always. I would in, like, like you said, like give me a choice. I'd rather go to the zoo than. than I'd rather the go to the zoo. Than yeah, the birds, the bald eagle, very magnificent looking. It's big, right? It's super big, bro. And it's like very majestic uh, when you see in person. That, that, that to me that was the highlight, lah. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that you go see the you go see a bald eagle, right? Okay. Yeah. But speaking of bald eagles, right, right, bro. I want I want to bring up this thing, right? Because I I think because of the fact that Liverpool played Newcastle, right, after we recorded the episode, right, we yes. weren't able to talk about this one very important thing, right? It's called Diego Jota going for a swim, bro, bro. I I was the one that showed you the video, right? Yes, I saw the video. Bro, I, I, I saw, honestly, I was, I... right, I for everybody to understand, right? In Singapore, right, watching that game very early in the morning means sacrificing your capability to work because we are watching it yeah, like probably three, four a.m. in the morning. One, you must be really a hardcore fan, to or watch... it has to be like a cup final, or yeah, to yes. watch that kind. 
when there's work the next day. Correct. So, the thing is that it has to be a very important game for you to want to watch, right? So, when Paul sent me to this, right? And the thing is, Paul's a hardcore fan, he probably will watch it. You watched it, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I tell you what, right? Like, minus all of that, right? That dive, right? Bro, it was, I think uh, it was the most blatant dive I've ever seen in my life. Eh. Yes, 100%. In my life. Yeah. I honestly due to the like, fact, okay, due to the fact uh, there was VA, uh, there's VA right involved now. If you're talking give, about like maybe like what, 10, 15 years ago, that one we would just show a point at the referee, you know? It's yeah, like, how correct. can you miss that? But they, no, the thing that, it, the thing that it annoyed me about this whole thing, right, was that there was VA uh, and he gave, he gave the penalty. Eh. Yeah, so, that's the thing I wanted to say. Right? I, I'm, I'm a firm believer of controversies, right, and conspiracy theories, right? Yeah. I think, uh, Ever since the Liverpool incident with the Spurs thing, right? I do think uh, now they are instru- the VAR uh, is instructed to support on few decisions no matter what. Then it eliminates to, the is to, uh, is, to, what is to make the on few decision credible. You, you get what I mean? Instead of like, oh no, we oppose the referee, we oppose the referee. Then it just makes but, the on few referee's job look like he's, he look, it makes him look very incompetent. Uh, bro, the thing is that- But that was incompetence. Of, that was incompetence. <laughs> because the whole point of the VAR, right, is to literally- uh, See out. what the referee cannot see, right? Correct. See what the referee cannot see. He dribbled past the goalkeeper, right? He had the ball in his sights, right? And he fell down, like two steps. No, he took a step and then he fell down. He, was it? It was two, bro. Yeah, was it two he steps? went. Oh yeah, he went one two. Then he dived. Right? One yeah. two. Then he dived. So the thing is that you went one two and dive right? Then you see Alan Shearer and Ian Wright all call him out on Twitter. Yeah, bro. Even the Gary Neville on the commentator when he was because Gary Neville was the commentator in the game, right? Yeah. He was like, no, 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 no. This is how, how is this given? Okay, but why? Uh, why do you think it's like that, bro? I don't know, man. Like honestly, I feel like English referees, right, are the worst in the world. In it doesn't help that this is uh Anthony Taylor, right? <laughs> The, the only <laughs> thing that would made it worse was, was that it was either Michael, Michael Oliver or Simon Hooper. Simon Hooper. <laughs> that would have made it a lot worse, right? But bro, Okay, but do you think that the Liverpool against Spurs, that after that incident has anything to do with this? I think this one, right, is just blatant, like... Basic uh, in- referee it's incompetence. It's just incompetence. Uh. This one is just incompetence. Because, okay, because the thing is that, like, let's say, for example, the Liverpool incident, right? It's a huge mistake, yes. But that one was a miscommunication and a misunderstanding of a situation, man. Between the between the whole decision, right? After they go out of the vehicle, right? Even though it's still incompetence, lah. This one, bro, is clear cut, right? There's no dispute on it. He fell on his own accord. It's a dive. The okay, another time, question. Uh, the Anthony Taylor said, uh, gave a yellow card to the re- the keeper, right? Yeah. If he deemed that to be a last man challenge, shouldn't that be a read? Exactly. <laughs> Because it's the so he messed up right. again, right? He messed up again, and the <laughs> thing is that right, like to me that annoys me, right? The only dive I've seen worse, right, is the Michael Richards dive when he gets Aston Villa. You know the one that the yeah, but that was not a thing. penalty, you know. It wasn't a penalty. It was just like he's I mean, like, I've seen out. many, many other dives that that is like or that, that is not in the penalty box. That is like maybe I touch you, then you dive that kind, you know? Yeah, correct. But this is in a situation zero, where zero, it's one zero by con- uh, one on one zero contact. Uh, yeah, dive when it's like. When he, he didn't need to dive, you know. He could have he just tapped the ball in. He could just tap the ball in, right? The score would have been the same. It would have been 4-2. All in all, it was, it was a mess, uh, bro. Yeah, it was a mess. Like, <laughs> like, like even, even me that said, how was that penalty? <laughs> yeah, even a Liverpool fan said that. How can, even, bro, how can this be allowed, man? Yeah, bro. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still amazed, right, that these type of things actually still exist also. Right? Then also, like, incompetence of the English the English Referees Association is another thing, okay? But anyway, uh, moving on from Liverpool to another portion of Liverpool, right? Okay, so today for this, for this week's episode, what we are going to talk about is we are going to talk about the big FA Cup clash between Arsenal and Liverpool, which finished 2-0 at the Emirates. Uh, we're going to talk about the game, what we thought about, and also some interesting things of what we feel Arsenal is lacking. Uh. I think that's pretty much what we are going to go for. Uh. Then, of course, we look forward to the match of the week, which is, of course, Manchester United versus Spurs. Now, just a side note, right? Man United haven't played the FA Cup tie. They are playing the FA Cup tie tonight. Like, the day of recording. We are recording on a Monday night, right? They are playing Tuesday morning Singapore time for 15 a.m. We shall see what's going to happen with that with that particular result, right? But, bro, you ready to get into it? Let's do it, brother. All right. So, now, uh, the one what we are going to talk about today is, of course, as you can see, Arsenal have been knocked out of the FA Cup. And the question becomes, are they losing it and are they losing ground? To be honest, right, like, bro, like, this is Arsenal's third loss in a row. Two so EPL they, and one... They've lost two EPL, they've lost this FA Cup game. So, like, if the fact that they've lost this FA Cup game, right, and they've lost two in a row, uh, in the Premier League, and right, then they're now out of the FA Cup, right? To me, right, this is what I find interesting, right, is that, okay, uh, the final score was 2-0, 
Diaz scores a winner to see off, which is a very nice finish. Also, like the ball hit the bar three times in this match. Yeah, the cross, the cross bar, <laughs> the right? Cross yeah. bar, the cross bar, right? Arsenal wasted their chances in the first half. Like Kai Havertz had open hitter, Odegaard hits the bar. They were wasteful, lah, in essence, right? And Liverpool took their chances, right? When you are touted as the team that was supposed to be the biggest challenge to Liverpool and Man City, right? And now you have lost three games in a row, and your manager comes out and says that you're not intending to look at getting a striker, right? Bro, are they done? They're not done, I think. But they, the, I would say they are not at the level where they were last year. Then, in terms of like being ruthless. Okay, then let me change my question. Are they hindering themselves? Oh, yes. Uh, I do believe there's some... I would say hindering, but there's like a... It's like they are going sideways rather than forward, you know? Okay. Yeah. In, okay, what do you mean? Okay, so like... You know how like they when they when they say okay we just need Declan Rice and a striker then we can push for the title already. Correct, correct. So now Declan Rice has has come in, but there seems to be like a bit of a uneasy situation where they yep. cannot win games, you know. And there was and you compare it to Arsenal's last season, right, where they were quite ruthless, they were pushed to the end to score. Yeah. But why is it different now that they cannot close out games or score take their chances? Honestly, right, it's because their front three chemistry is not there. No, and as an, I wanted to talk about the goalkeeper situation also. Yep. Uh, so many people think that, that this is a very smart move by Ateta to no. to bring Raya in and gr- give Ramsdale competition, right? I don't I don't see the the tactical masterclass in this. Eh? No. It still brings back the question the question mark from the first time he signed him. So the Ramsdale who, who has not played like what? I say like one or two months like of about, football, about right? There, since that, since the time that he was he was taken off for Raya. Yeah, and then you throw him in such a big game against he badly, Liverpool. He, he, he didn't really do badly, but the first goal he he came out right. <laughs> mm, he came out. Then it's a uh, but it was on goal lah. Yeah, it was on goal by. Yeah, so in a way, like I'm, I'm trying to say, like uh, there's a bit of uneasiness in this team. I, okay, my my opinion and what I think is, I do agree with you. That or like something's lacking. Yeah, you know. I said in, it's striker, bro. It's hundred percent striker because the thing what I feel right is that last year they did what Liverpool have been doing for a prolonged period of time, which is that you're not solely reliant on your striker to score. You rely on your, your wingers, yeah. your Martinelli and your Saka, your Saka. Like just like how Liverpool have always relied on Mane and Salah. And then last year was Jota, Jota, Jota DS, Salah, right? So your striker, right? Like Darwin Nunes, Cody Gakpo, they're not the main goal scoring threat. You get what I mean? And the thing is that Liverpool's whole thing, right, is that Salah's the main goal scoring threat, right? But Salah's also equally as good as being a provider, also. Yeah. So the thing. Arsenal's problem, right, is that Saka is not that. Neither is Martinelli. So the question marks that have been raised, right, from other people and from what I've seen, right, is that. How often do the front three actually link up, link up for us? No, if you were to compare it to, let's say, Man City or Liverpool. They yeah, but the thing is, for Arsenal, right, I think out of the front three, only Saka is the nailed-on like, starter. Correct. Saka is the nailed-on starter, right? But his production level is not as high as it was, it was last year. Yeah, I, I, that, that I agree. Because, yeah, I don't know why. Uh, there's, there seems to be something off this season for him. Okay, but then, <laughs> to be honest, right, if you do watch last year's, last year's like his, the goals he scored, right? Yeah. A lot of them are, bro, was like tap in deflection. There's a few nice goals like where he score from like cut in and then shoot. Yeah, yeah. But if you really go and see, right, a lot of it is like tap ins or deflections. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. I agree. Yeah. It's, so maybe now there's less lesser of that, lah, you know. So and, that's why you see the the tally is it's all relative. And you must remember, right, like last year last year there were games where yes, Arsenal fought to the end, right? But they had stroke of luck. I think a lot of games were stroke of luck. Yeah. Like like remember the the Aston Villa game, the Emmy Martinez one, the one. The Jorginho one, right? Yeah. The Jorginho one off the bar, back off the back of the back, then roll into the goal. I mean, that's not the stuff that you actually need to get ahead. But just that now, right? When it comes down When to, they when they don't have this straight of luck, short of luck, right? Yes. Yeah. When you don't have this straight of luck, when you need to really grind grind it out and try to get something, right? That's when you need your striker. Like to be And then that's honest, where you cannot squander your chances as well. Yes, correct. So to be really frank, right, like Kai Harvest had the open header, right? That should have been on target. The corner. Yes. That should have hundred percent been on target, right? If if that was a, a target man, uh, even just Hoyland, right? Like this I think Hoyland, Harlan, Ivan Tony, Levin Walkins, Kane, uh, uh. Walkins uh, that's on target, eh, minimum. Eh. Yeah, he's not a centre forward or stri- striker per se, you know. Precisely, but the pro- but that's my question. Is like, if you can't rely on Harvard's, right, you also can't rely on Enketia and Gabriel. 
Yeah, Jesus because he has uh, injury pro, he's very injury prone, so he's not consistent. He's like our, he's like Menus Marshall like that, like. He's the Arsenal's yeah. version of Marshall, yeah. And Ketia is like a uh, too inconsistent. Yeah, like one game he can score a hat trick, then like go the, blank the, for the next few games. That kind. The next few games totally nothing. Right? You need a striker. You don't want to get a striker. Arteta says you're not getting a striker. So in the end, you to me is like oh, yeah. So is that does that sound like he's ex- accepting that this will be this. There, there, there will be such kind of performances from now until the end of the season. If I'm the manager, I wouldn't accept that. Yeah. You're try, you, you, why would I, if I'm the manager, I'm trying to go for title, right? why would I accept a decline? Yeah. And he's like, I, I heard he's like telling fans to, to support the, to trust in him and all that. So from what last season, they, they, they are, they're starting to not, they're starting to lose faith really, is it? Like, I mean, just as an outsider, to be frank, right? Like, you need a striker. Everybody knows it. You're one striker away from getting that Premier League title, but you decide to go with your existing ones, right? And it's gonna and it's already costing you already. And this is what what is bad, uh, bro. Like their lineup uh, is almost the main eleven, eh? Yeah, and they only have like one or two, pl- a few players injured, right? Like Timber. Yeah, so, so, so like let's say for example, right? Like left wing, left left wing was Nelson, left back was Kiwal. The rest all first team. The rest is what. Ramsdale, White, Rice. Saliba, Gabriel, Odegaard, Rice, Jorginho, Saka, Havertz, Nelson. No, Havertz. If you take out Martin, if you take out Nelson, put in Trossard, and you take out uh, Enketia for Jorginho, right, then you move Havertz back. Uh, you already got your main 11 already. Right? <laughs> yeah, like three quarter of the main 11 played. Correct. Versus, versus like a Liverpool team uh, that literally uh, no Salah, no Van Dijk, no Shaboslai, no Simikas. And they played a few youngsters, right? Yeah, and they played like Javier, like, then they played like what? Bobby Clark, Connor Bradley, right? Like Van Dijk, Salah not even on the so boss not even on the bench, bro. And you lose your first, your like. first choice winger, your first choice defender. <laughs> all, not, all, all not there. Your captain, all not there. Then you, then you, you still, still cannot lose. beat them. Uh. Yeah, you still lose at home. <laughs> at home, yeah lah. Think about, if you really think about it, you're looking at playing the same eleven. No, you're playing. You're playing almost your max eleven, right? And you're losing to Liverpool's like second team. Eh. Yeah. So, in in the long run, does it benefit? Liverpool to continue in this FA Cup or does it benefit Arsenal to get knocked out easy like earlier? Okay, I I look at it this way like we we talked about this right like it benefits Arsenal more because they can focus on on the Champions League already. That's what benefit, they said last year. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't benefit it doesn't benefit Liverpool right because the FA Cup right and the Europa League ah, they are how to say ah, like the the matches are very intertwined to a point where it's like. You play FA Cup on a Sunday, right? You're playing Europa League on a Thursday night. So it's like what? You got 40, 48 hours to rest, eh? And we went through we went through that last year. And we yeah, nearly, but, made, we nearly okay, made the Okay, but when you said benefit Arsenal, right? Last year they got knocked out of the Europa. Yeah. So they then a lot of people say, oh, then this will give us the a clear run on the Premier League. Bro, they lost Saliba. Bro, they end up Yeah, I seen Saliba. But your players more... are your the rest of your, your, your squad are rest, re, fully rested, eh? Alright. So, so the thing is, but they lost Saliba. La. Saliba is the spine of that team. If he was gone, la, everything was went to... But now, eh, you see, Saliba played with Gabriel. Eh. No, they're fine. It's, the it's just they cannot score. They just cannot score. <laughs> they cannot finish games. La. And do you think right, the, by throwing Havertz in, the, in this team, right, it creates like, so what do we do with him? That kind, you know? No, it's a bad purchase. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, what is your objective? What's his function? Right? Yeah. What's his function? You play 4-3-3. He's not a central midfielder. He's not a central forward. He's not a central forward. He's not a winger. He's not a winger. He cannot play 8. He can only play 10. And the thing is that your 10, if let's say you play 4 2 3 1, right, is your captain. Bro, your 10 is Odegaard. Yeah. Yeah. So what? what's the function? I I, I mean, if you're saying like he's the backup to Odegaard, then okay, right? Yeah, but they're trying to they're trying to force him. Shove him in him. every game, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to force him and squeeze him into the lineup for no apparent reason whatsoever. What if you play two strikers? Eh? They will get run over in midfield, bro. Yeah, 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 Arsenal is the team that cannot play two striker. Yeah, yeah. They cannot play two striker. They will get run over in midfield. One, Declan Rice as good as he is, right? And cannot cover the whole team. Sure. Cannot cover the whole team, right? Even though people claim that he covered one to five. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, for those watching, I uh, should go. <laughs> you know when uh, the previous game when uh, Liverpool played Arsenal, right? Yeah, when Trent missed the he hit the post, right? <laughs> hit the post. When Liverpool countered and Trent uh hit the post, apparently uh. Rice Aura put him off. 
I mean, I don't want to be bad or anything, right? Like, I but mean, like, he didn't love, do anything. We love Declan Rice as a player, right? But he didn't do anything. 1v5, yeah. you cannot do anything, right? And it's gotten so bad to the point where like Paul didn't want to, didn't remember Declan Rice. He forgot Declan Rice last week in during yeah. our team of the season pickup so far. So, I mean, if you were to play two midfielders, right? In the in the thing, uh, they'll get run over. You can't put So, I think, you should, I think you should drop him, uh. Yeah, then you play your uh, what's his name? Uh, Older guard, Rice, and then maybe like a Fabio Vieira or a Party, Thomas Party. Yeah, yeah, but I I feel like bro, like honest uh, like they need the striker. They can play the exact same way they've been playing the four three three, right? But they just need a striker. So you feel that given where they are now in the league, hmm. if they don't have a striker, they will not. No, they cannot contend because honestly, last year. Martinelli and Saka had outstanding seasons, right? But this season they are not up to par, not the same standard as last year. I, yeah, that, that one, I, their returns are, are the returns is not there. The returns are not there. It's not as bad as the Marcus Rashford scenario. But the thing is that if your returns diminish by that much, right, com- from last year, right, moving forward, right, and you don't have a solid striker, right, you will have a goal scoring problem. They are. Let me see. Yeah, uh, they you, are. They are five points behind Liverpool already. By losing games that they could have easily won, easily won, I would say, yeah, like by right, they, hey, bro, they should you, be. No, yeah. they should have even lost to Fulham. Yeah, they lost to Fulham. They should lost, they lost to, to West Ham. They, they, they lost to Fulham. They shouldn't have lost to West Ham. They should have lost to Liverpool, right? They should have lost to Liverpool, right? They beat Brighton. They lost to Aston Villa, which by right they should win, and then they lose to, and then they barely scraped by against Luton Town. Eh? How do you concede three against Luton Town? Because the, the guy, the other striker named Adi Bayo. What? Adi Bayo. <laughs> Adi Bayo. <laughs> that name always haunts us, no, ah, bro. So. <laughs> uh, but I mean, they, it's like that. Lah. I mean, you're talking about what? Four four losses in the past, like what? Six games? Six, yeah. seven games? And That's and, not a good return. Eh. And usually, and five points behind at the mid- midway mark is... Yeah, bro. They, they got ground to catch up. Ah. Yeah. yeah lah. So, I mean, like, is this a sign of a two-horse race now moving forward? I, I feel that the next few games are quite... Uh, okay, so they play Liverpool, I think, in two or three games' time. They play Liverpool... If they lose that, then I think it's done. Yeah, they play Liverpool in Feb. In the first week of Feb. Of, first week of Feb. It feels like January has started only, right? Yeah. But there's only two, two more EPL games this month. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because of the FA Cup, so they're playing Palace, they're playing Arsenal, then they play Liverpool, and then they play West Ham again. Yeah. Assuming they beat both teams, like uh, Palace and Forest, then they play Liverpool, right? Yep. Assuming that they beat them, I would still say that the the big game is against Liverpool. Like if they lose that, then I think it will be a that will cement my opinion that it will be a two horse race. Yeah, that's what it could be at. earlier, no? If they drop points against Palace or yeah, because I mean, like as much as I want to put Aston Villa inside this title race, right, I don't think Aston Villa is going to be in the title race yet. Maybe top four, yeah, top four definitely. But I don't think they have that kind of connection. It's going to be if Arsenal be two... drop more points, right? It's going to be Liverpool City plus with the, plus with Kevin De Bruyne back. Yeah, bro. Bro, he's back. And I'm He's scared. back with the comeback hair, right? With the comeback hair and okay. the pass to Doku. In one in what in less than five minutes he assisted more than what Anthony. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, I think. Alright, bro. Speaking of Anthony, right, like we segue already, right? Okay. This week's match of the week, of course, is Manchester United versus Spurs at Old Trafford, right? Spurs will be going into this game, right, without their captain Hilming Sun, who is away on international duty for the Asian Cup. Uh. Uh, but they are bringing Timo Werner on loan. So, bro, <laughs> I want to ask you, right? Like, are they good enough? Without bro, him? okay. The reason why they, I think the reason why they bring Werner right, is pure pace. They just need pace. Ah. Because if you think about it, there's no sun, right? There's no pace. Eh. Yeah. Richarlison, you're not wrong. Maybe, yes, lah, but if you're playing him centrally, he's not going to run down the wings and all that. No, he's not. Yeah, and then uh, who else is there? Udoji. Mm. Who's the right winger? Kulusevsky, right? Yeah, he's not, he's not as fast as Kulus- a Werner. Kulusevsky yeah. is not f- as fast as Werner or, or Son. Yeah, but I'm very surprised eh, by this loan transfer. Like, why? how would Werner even want to come back to England and to what, of all teams first, you know? I mean, I, I look at it more like he has something to prove in England. He didn't do very well at Chelsea. Yeah. And honestly, I would say that in terms of an environment that is probably a bit more conducive, I would say Spurs is better than Chelsea. But he come here as play, he play as a winger or a striker? striker? Striker, bro. They play Ricardo. I think they play Ricardo left. Kind of like what they did with with the Sun thing, like either that or they or they Ricardo and the who are, who are interchange, interchangeable. Yeah. 
left wing right left, left wing move to central and everything like that but bro like I want to check right like if Korea, South Korea make the final of the Asian Cup right Sun is out for one one whole month eh. the final is on the 10th of February for the Asian Cup so if you're talking I will, about pre- that, I will predict like either Japan and Korea will, will make will be favorites to make the final la, right yeah yeah, so, let's just put it as like maybe he'll he'll miss one month. He'll he'll miss one month, right? You think Spurs can survive for one month without him? No problem, bro. You sure? You is medicine coffee? coming back? Is medicine coming back? Don't know yet, bro. Like okay, let's, let's Okay, go. maybe not survive, yes, but they will not die, die. They will not lose every game. They will not lose every game, right? But but I'm not sure, bro. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So so uh, let let's let's just let's just see this, uh, let's just see this, uh. Um if you can uh. He finishes on the 10th of it. If let's say yeah, so Korea go all the way I would say final. like he will only miss menu Brentford, Everton, Brighton. Yeah, which is not so which is not too bad. Still okay. Which is not too bad. With the I, and I also think that because the reason why I think maybe they pick Werner right is because like Leipzig, right? Spurs play a very high pressing style and line. So Leipzig play a high line. So Werner will Werner can benefit more from that, I would think. Yeah, and they have a if you think about it, yeah, they, 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 their wing backs are fast. Yes. They only lack like fast wingers, you know. And they don't have a playmaker now. Yeah, in medicine, right? Medicine's out. Then the playmaker was Sun. Ma. Sun was scoring and playmaking and play, doing the goal creation. Ma. Bro, eight goal contributions in December, in like what? Four four games, I think. Correct, correct. So, yeah. What can we do, bro? Okay, but I'll say this question, right, bro. So Spurs, I think they're like that, right? We shall see whether or not they survive or not before we're going to match this, right? But bro, we have to talk about our club, lah. Um, so it's Man U versus Spurs? Man U versus Spurs. Bro, Spurs going to win, bro. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I've got a big question, right? Man U, nine, nine losses already, 14 long competitions, right? If they lose to... Uh, okay. If they lose to Wigan, and if they lose to Spurs, right, is he gone? Bro, he should have been gone the moment... Bro, he, he was... We have been saying this for too long, bro. He, he should have been gone, like, I think, two months ago. You, bro, you finished last in your Champions League, right? I think that, that's enough, bro. Lost to Bayern, yeah. lost to... Galatasaray, <laughs> lost to Copenhagen. Then, not to mention, you are out of the... You are out okay, of the let's, like, let's just face it, okay? No matter what, he will not get sacked. So, uh, next yeah. question, sir. <laughs> Alright. When you finish so, the year... By losing to Nottingham Forest in a manner okay. that they did. Then you lost it too when you decided to say that Kwame Tomane plays holding midfielder better than Kobe Mino. Lose, uh, lose at home 3 new to Bournemouth. Still don't worry to, to, to leave the club. Alright, moving on. Okay, bro. So, let's go. Let's just go to our match predictions, right? And, and end the conversation of our misery about Man United, right? This is the shortest we've ever talked about Man United. <laughs> no hey, thing, there's, right? no, there's, there's no point giving there's them no the other thing. Okay. attention. So, I, yeah. Just, yeah. so, what we are going to do is we're going to talk about our match predictions and our football cocking match of the week predictions right now. So, um, we are going to talk about the last two games which where the points go, right? So, the latest one, of course, is the FA Cup. Uh, both of us predicted a 1-1, right? But because of Caesars Paper Stone, right? Paul decided to pick Arsenal to score first. <laughs> he was wrong. <laughs> Liverpool scored first. So, so I get the point, even though we both of us predicted a draw because we, we went, went for the right one. And then, of course, if for everybody that don't remember, right, is that we did do the predictions for the Liverpool-Newcastle game the week before. But because our recording went out on a, was on a Monday and our thing went out on a Wednesday, they played in the middle of the week, right? We weren't able to recap that particular game. Lah. We did do some recap, even though there was a slight controversy about a draw, right? But, the predictions that we had for this game, right, was that Paul predicted a 2 0 win for Liverpool. I predicted a 3 0. So anything below two Paul gets anything above three, I guess. So yes, I win again. I got four, I got two points. Oh, look so at how now, the, the tides have changed. The tide has turned. Now officially, right, the score between the two of us is 4 <laughs> 4. That's good. That's good. I like I like it, the challenge. It is 4 4. We are tied in terms of our match prediction, right? So, bro, going into this thing, right, what is the match prediction? For Man United and Spurs. Spurs is going to win. But I don't think they will score a lot because Sun is not there. So, I'm going to say uh, Spurs 1-0. One year win now uh, for Spurs. One year, one year. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Man U in recently too shaky. Okay. I- I'm going to go Spurs win 2-0. Okay. 
Same thing lah. If if uh, if many win, then we do both. How? If many if many win, right? Then we see. I, I don't know how it work, but we see. We, 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 we just we just see the scoreline, right? I think I think maybe what we can do, right, is that um we got we give menu no hope. No, the thing is, we, we menu f- oh, everybody should be like that because if yeah. you you cannot you get hype you can't expectations yeah. too high too high or anything like that. Yeah, okay. I, no, no, I tell no, you what, bro. Just... Let's just do the flip. Higher score wins. If let's say it's one zero or two one, right? Deficit, ah, then we shall see you. We let let's just see you. It won't happen because I I got a feeling one of us will hit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like if I win one 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 zero, I win two two one two zero. You win. Uh. Yeah lah, about there lah. Something like draw. Eh? Draw then we decide. Then we, we then then we void, have a conversation uh. about this. Okay, we see we how it is. Conversation about this because we the problem the problem with the two of us now right is that we don't expect the Man United to win at all. It's not a problem, bro. It's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> we are more interested in the side bet than the team. <laughs> All right. Okay. So just for everybody to notice, right, the side bet is, of course, a $70 dinner at minimum or a $70 gift for the other person to be presented on the Chit Chat Podcast Network. All right, Ken. All right, bro. So that is it for this week's episode of the Football Kaki. All right, so that is it for this week's episode of the Football Kaki, brought to you by the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. Now, for those of you who are tuning in and who have already liked and subscribed to our channels, we hope that you continue to support us by watching our other shows, which of course include the Copy Bros every Monday involving Paul, me, that Brandon, Sin Young, where they talk about different topics and they have some interesting ones. Like this week, they are doing the predictions of 2024 with Brandon and me, that. You're not inside the episode, right, bro? No, no, no. Okay. So they're doing the predictions of 2024. Do tune in for that. Leave a comment for the for the thing to see whether you actually agree with their predictions or not or if you have your own predictions. Uh. So do continue to support them. And of course, if you like game shows, we do have the SG Draft Podcast every Friday involving both shows, the Kobe Bros and the Football Kaki, where we come together under the SG Draft show and we draft about different topics and have fun while we do it. Last week was the Back to School Draft, which was quite funny. I saw the video about GY. And the, the the catching, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I cannot lie, but bro, like I agree. But what you say about public caning, yeah? He said about public caning. You what you what you all say about public caning? They put the book at the back. The, yeah, the yeah. Put the book at the, the back. back. <laughs> put the back just to absorb <laughs> the blow. <laughs> it's to protect you, your lower back, right? To protect your spine. lower back because they because Scully they miss. Uh, then later the principal hit. Uh, then you can hear the the wind hit just. <laughs> <laughs> But how many public clinics have you have you witnessed, bro? I think it'll be a handful at least, right? I, I think mine mine changed though. Like I think I ha- I witnessed probably about six. Public or classroom? Public. Like in front of the whole school. In front of the whole school. Damn. I think I witnessed three public and like four in classroom. <laughs> yeah, in class in class only one only for me. But oh. in, in school, in public probably about five or six. In, this is com- combination of primary school and secondary school. Because like last time, right, like you know the one that we all, all, all know is the your the student face the put hand on the table face the back there he just whack whack like on right. You know last time primary school one uh, I remember last time uh, in you know you know when you're in school right the you put your hand out like that one right. Then the principal will whack your hand one with the bamboo stick. Eh. I did hey, shit. That is not public caning lah. That is public caning bro. Well, public caning is the hand on the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, they cha- they changed it. They, oh, they that, changed was public, it yeah. that was public game. Then they changed it later. Yeah, but the hand one, I think too lame. Bro, yeah. you cannot. That time, that time you were primary one, primary two. You cannot. You cannot. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Upper sec. Must be upper it's primary. Only, it's only until you get to like four, four, five, six. Upper, six, pri- uh. upper primary, and then the secondary school. Then that type of thing will happen. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So this one, I, I we didn't count this. I think. <laughs> you all counted. I counted. To me, I counted that. If you go that, six. Like, if you call it just the back one, right? It's about uh. four. <laughs> it's, still, it's still a lot bro. yeah, <laughs> yeah nah, but what to do alright so bro before we go off you got anything to add yeah uh, I was gonna ask you right so when you mentioned about the predicting 2024 right, so who's gonna win Euro 2024 Euro 2024 if you were to just like say on the top of your head now France France eh? I think Germany no lah kidding no 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 yeah, Even they, 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 are, they are the host lah but I don't think they'll win so it's I think either, it's either France or England but England always lets everybody down so I, nah, do not have my, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about England. Maybe France again, yeah. 
I think it's likely going to be France. Uh. Okay, so so I, I I think it's France, uh, bro. But France. before we go, we just want to say thank you to everybody uh, for supporting our channel. We hope that you continue to like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you have, we hope that you continue to introduce this channel to your friends, your family. Follow us on our social media such as TikTok and Instagram and for other contents and our short reels and everything like that. So we are grateful for your support and we hope that you continue to support us throughout 2024. So with that, from everybody here at the Chichata Podcast Network and the Football Cup, we just want to say... Bye-bye.